Hello fellow investors, welcome to my Hindsight Master channel. In this series, you will learn about a Busa listed company in 10 minutes. The topics are mainly on its business, development and financial health. This month, I challenge myself in covering the top 5 glove makers. In the first episode, we will analyze the entire industry, mainly on supply and demand, development and cost structure. In the second episode, we will analyze the individual glove companies mainly on business, development, and financial health. Glove companies compute their ranking or market share based on number of gloves produced per year. The current largest glove maker is undoubtedly Top Glove, while second glove maker is Hatalega, which has the largest market cap. As for the third and fourth, Kosan and Supermax, after the four well-known glove stocks, there is a strong fifth. The company eyes to become the world largest top three glove makers within five years. He is three trunk glove in Thailand and is now the world's largest fully integrated natural rubber company. Glove can be categorized by usage or material. First, we categorize by usage. Glove with the most stringent requirement is surgical glove because bacterial infections to patients shall be kept to minimum. Next in line in terms of stringent requirements is medical glove, followed by industrial glove and then household glove. Among these areas of usage, medical gloves has the highest market share. In terms of material, we have latex, Nitro and Winner. Initial evolution of Malaysia glove companies, which produces mainly latex gloves, can be attributed to access to Malaysia's rich natural rubber resources. Recently, trend of demand switches from latex gloves to nitro gloves because they will not lead to latex allergies problem. Winner glove is relatively cheap, but mainly used in non-medical sectors. Three key factors affecting the sector are 1. Capital expansion 2. Competitive intensity and 3. Raw material price volatility Capital expansion is the key driver of growth but also key driver of excess supply on over expansion. Glove companies, especially the top 5, will expand at a rate faster than their peers due to the nature that the glove industry is an oligopoly high concentration on the field companies. The global market share of the top 5 is 55% in 2018 and is expected to increase to 60% in 2020. From the expansion plan of the top 5, we can see that their growth rate is about 15-18%, to 18%, which is higher than the expected global glove demand growth rate of 8-10%. to 10%. The top 5 seems to plan not only to grab the market share of the small glove companies, but also to grab the market share of the foreign glove companies. Owing to sectors top players' aggressive expansion plan, there's a risk of oversupply in the short to medium term. Gloves, especially in the medical industry, are necessity goods. Therefore, this original demand for gloves are inelastic. Glove demand is still on the rise due to 1. Increasing hygiene awareness across the world with increasing healthcare regulations, including the developing countries. 2. Increasing aging population, driving healthcare spending higher. And 3. Pandemic outbreak like H1N1, bird flu and SARS. So far, gloves usage per capita is still very low in emerging Asia. The US, Europe and Japan account for 13% of the world's population, but account for 70% of the world's demand. Conversely, Emerging Asia accounts for 56% of the world's population, but only 11% of the world's demand. And once countries have glove usage per capita above 200 in general, while countries like China, India and Indonesia have glove usage per capita below 10. China plans to strengthen its overall healthcare system with China Health 2020, 
and increased healthcare spending to 7% of GDP in 2020 from 5% now. President Xi Jinping emphasized that for economy to advance, health should improve. Indonesia and India have also proposed medical programs such as the National Insurance Scheme in Indonesia. For comparison, if the glove usage per capita in China and India is half that of the US, the global demand for gloves will double. So is there an oversupply of gloves? Looking back at history, excess gloves occurred in 2014 and 2016. In 2014, competitive pressure emerged as capacity expansion, particularly in the nitro glove segment, hurt glove prices. Coincidentally, natural gas and electricity costs increased, which forbid glove makers from passing the cost to consumers. Luckily, in 2015, a decline in price of key raw materials and a simultaneous depreciation of Malaysia Ringgit give glove makers a chance to regain their competitive edge. In 2016, higher rubber slash nitro prices and higher competition due to an oversupply made 2016 the weakest year for glove makers. Ultimately, Top Glove and Hatalaga vow to push back their capacity expansion plans to align with the industry demand growth and avoid excessive price-based competition. Conversely, 2018 was the best year for gloves due to 1. Stricter environmental policies enacted by the Chinese government on Chinese winner glove manufacturers and 2. Stagnant capacity expansion of Kosan. In 2019, the top 5 glove makers are aggressively expanding. With the return of Chinese winner glove manufacturers and potential appreciation of Malaysia Ringgit, the market is expecting an oversupply on gloves, especially nitro gloves. The decisive outcome whether there will be an oversupply depends on market demand, especially in emerging Asia. However, even an oversupply occurs, it is not the doomsday for glove companies because 1. Oversupply is temporary. Recall 2014 and 2016. 2. Glove makers can be flexible and slow down commissioning. And 3. Industry consolidation can occur, leading to larger firms to take over smaller firms. After discussion on the two factors to watch out on glove industry, we are left with 3. Raw material price volatility. Latex glove and nitro glove cost breakdown are as follow, with latex slash nitro costs account for more than 40% of total cost. For latex glove, rubber prices are expected to remain low until 2022 due to excess rubber production. For nitro glove, the main raw materials are acrylon nitro and butadine, which seem to elevate in line with higher oil prices and strong demand from auto industry. Therefore, experts are more worried about nitro glove. Other costs include gas electricity 12 to 15% and labor 8 to 12%. In summary, there are two scenarios in the glove industry. One, incremental demand is enough to absorb new capacity, which leads to low competitive intensity and stable margins. Two, oversupply, which require glove companies to look for solutions like 2014 and 2016. If the second scenario occurs, we will need to watch out for the fluctuation in raw material prices. The next episode will focus on individual glove stocks, mainly on business development and financial health. Thank you for listening to the analysis of glove industry. Please remember to subscribe. If you want to learn more about the glove industry, you can read the following analyst reports or newspapers. Thank you.